to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Give God praise. Just bless his name. Father, you are faithful. Bless him and say, Lord, you mean the world to me. They may not know what you mean to me, but I know what you mean to me. We give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the glory. We bless you. Everywhere around this auditorium, just lift up your hands and begin to bless his name. They may not know what you mean to us. They may not understand the reason behind our passion. They may not know why we are so addicted to the things of the Spirit. They may not understand why we love Him above and beyond our lives. They may not understand why we've chosen to lay our lives down for the cause of the kingdom. But we know because we are men of understanding. We know why we are making all the sacrifice for the kingdom. We know why we have chosen to walk the path of holiness. We know why we've chosen to understand the ways of the Spirit. You know why you are here tonight? Men may wonder, you may be mocked and criticized. Why come and spend hours in His presence? They don't know, but you know, you have an awareness. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been by my side now may Israel say Lord we bless you hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord I'll just perform one function and then we'll pray praise God um, as a ministry we want to extend our condolence to the families that were bereaved, the lecturers and faculty of arts, we really, um, it was a very painful event. Hallelujah. Very, very painful event, the loss of these great people. And it's not just a loss to um, the institution, ABU, and to this nation, but I believe to the advancement of humanity. These are people who have labored and um, they were coming back from a worthy cause. Hallelujah. So all of their family members, if there are any around here, I want you to know that we are standing by you and we are praying. The Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? He said, even if a mother chooses to forget her suckling child, I will not forget you. He said, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just in one minute. We are going to hold our hands and speak. And command the forces of death over this city. Remember I told you at the beginning of the year that I saw these deaths happening. Lecturers. Hallelujah. It's not a thing to celebrate at all. And you must not be related to them. We don't care whether they are Christians, Muslims. It's irrelevant. Death is an enemy to everyone. Lift your voice and speak. You have authority. Command. Lord, we speak over this atmosphere. Hold hands together and pray something happens in the heavens when the church prays pray put yourself in the position of these family members and pray lord we avert the spirit of death oh death where is your sting we curse you in the name of jesus that spirit that steals away destinies we break the curse of death 
Lambrose Poja Malika Priada Balada Bakata. You are an enemy. We dispel your operation from this environment. We declare as ambassadors of the government of heaven, you shall not touch anyone. We place the mark of the blood upon everyone in this ministry. We place the mark of the blood upon everyone in this territory. We cause the spirit of death, death by accident, death by the hands of wicked men, death by terrorism, death as a result of premature exposure. We authorize heaven to step in over the territory of Zaria. This is our territory. We legislate as ambassadors. The lecturers of the institutions will not die. They will not die. We bless their families. We bring them up under the covering of the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. We are going to pray. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. You are going to pray for yourself and everybody you know. And say, In the name of Jesus, I bring my family and my loved ones under the covering of the blood. Go ahead and pray. You are walking. Pray for your workers. You are an employer, pray for your employees. You are a student, pray for your colleagues. Shake it, take it, baba, 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 baba. We refuse the news of untimely death. The Bible says, with long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. With long life. He didn't say, will I give you? He said, will I satisfy you? We command the shield of the blood and we revoke the oppressions of the spirit of death. We have no covenant with death. We have no agreement with death. We challenge you. We call you a spirit and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just feel led to ask to add one more prayer point. We are going to challenge the spirit of fear. There are many of us that cannot even travel around because you think will I die, you know, and all kinds of things. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Listen, 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 listen. Let me tell you something. Death is a spirit it can run away from certain people and you must become that kind of person are you listening to me you can't be moving around you have no covenant with death are you listening to me the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side he said none shall harm you but with your eyes shall you see and and watch and see the reward of the wicked hallelujah talking about the angels he said they will bear you up on their wings so that you will not even dash your feet against the stone. You are going to pray and say, I challenge fear. We challenge fear. Fear of traveling. Fear of moving around. We challenge fear. We are sons of light. We are daughters of light. We have no business with your fruitful works of darkness. We command an immunity that follows the citizens of this kingdom. We declare that we are immune. We are men of understanding and we refuse to fear. We command judgment upon the spirit of fear. Be gone from our camp. Be gone from our midst. In the name of Jesus, the fear of death that puts men under bondage. The Bible says you will be blessed in your going out. You will be blessed in your coming in. Come on, pray in tongues just for a minute. Shake away the spirit of fear. 
shake away the thoughts of death you shall live he said let Reuben live let Reuben live although he has been cursed but let Reuben live Lord we will live we choose life we choose life we choose blessing hallelujah say after me I refuse to fear say it I refuse to fear say thou shall not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day nor the noisome pestilence he didn't tell you there are no arrows flying around he said you shall not be afraid in other words it does not concern me you must believe it hallelujah don't leave your house thinking and wondering and seeing every bike man moving let me tell you something brothers and sisters nothing just happens hallelujah I speak a very big parable to you nothing just happens this is why we are praying you must learn to interpret things from the lens of the spirit and you will see that beyond the activities that happen nothing just happens are you getting what i'm saying vehicles don't just crisscross themselves like that spiritual wickedness that move around to make sure they jeopardize the destinies of men but you know what to do hallelujah father we give you the praise we bless you because you are faithful thank you for tonight pray one minute and say father i have come again change me i've come to hear i've come to contact understanding hallelujah give us understanding oh lord we incline our hearts to your word it will make us wise your word is giving us wisdom teaching us how to walk like gods upon the earth and tonight lord we expose our spirits to the light of your word let there be transformations let there be paradigm shifts oh god help us empower us challenge us in the name of the lord jesus Walk around to 10 people, hug them, tell them happy Valentine. Happy Valentine. Whether you know them or not, happy Valentine. hallelujah god bless you please sit down once again we welcome everybody inside and outside there's a lot to do tonight we're still on our series on financial dominion praise god hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord bless be the name of the lord I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever more. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Strings, strings, strings. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. Pray from your heart. It's a simple prayer. I love you forever. I love you forever. More than money. I love you More than power. Forever. More than Lord. faith. Declare your love for him on this day. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. One more time. Sing I 
love for you thank you for the privilege of access to light light that transforms light that builds light that changes lord in the name of jesus tonight we pray that you will help us we cry for the help of the spirit open our eyes to the secrets of kingdom wealth grant us access to light that will change us in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 35, 27. Mm. Last week, we started by talking a lot about, it was just an introduction. We ran through the course curriculum. What is all this on the screen? I thought we finished this whole Valentine thing. Please, let's get to work. No more distraction. It's time to concentrate. Psalm 35, verse 27. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Mm. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Hallelujah. Last week I began sharing with us and I told us that it's very wasteful to give people information that they are not prepared to receive. Hallelujah. They will not recognize it they will not value it and it will not be profitable unto them and i did tell us last week that um, there are certain steps we need to take if we desire change and transformation in any area of our life especially our finance number one that we must recognize the need to be financially blessed hallelujah you must see the need you must see the evil of poverty you must see the limitation that poverty and lack brings upon the body of christ and even to the agenda of god i told you that recognition creates a sense of responsibility in fact there is a whole book about recognition by mike Murdoch. it's called the law of recognition recognizing the need breaks limitations so that you don't have limitations stopping you and then it creates dissatisfaction hallelujah and then the second point is that you go for knowledge haven't recognized that there is a need to be blessed you go for knowledge hallelujah and then number three you take action consistent application of the things that you've heard how many of us still remember all these things praise god i'm just reviewing it quickly for the sake of those who were not here last week if you were not here the messages are available please get it and listen listen and listen again i don't know how many times i've listened to last week's message and um we discussed the concept of prosperity and i i said to us last week that prosperity comes from the word prosper remember and it means what to do well praise the lord to prosper means to possess a means and ability or power please in this series i want to be very very slow very straightforward i don't want to bring any ambiguity i just want us to get this as principle so that everyone will understand hallelujah we don't just want a few people to understand we want everybody to understand It means to possess a means, an ability, or power to meet the needs of mankind, regardless of what those needs may be. And remember, we discussed five areas of prosperity. Can you remember? Number one, spiritual prosperity. Number two, mental prosperity. Number three, bodily prosperity. That's the prosperity of your health. Number four, 
financial prosperity. Number five. So I told us that for many people, listen, every time they talk about prosperity, they think money. Hallelujah. Now you can see that financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of kingdom prosperity. Now in the world system, they just say happiness, joy, and so on and so forth. You see a lot of that in business books, but everything we are discussing here is with a kingdom paradigm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. I told us that to be prosperous spiritually means to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom. So your degree of prosperity spiritually is not just measured by being born again alone or being filled with the Holy Spirit alone. The degree to which you are understanding the ways and the principles of the kingdom is one of the indices that we use to measure spiritual prosperity. And then finally, the degree to which you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. So when you say man is spiritually prosperous, you are not just saying that man is a church goer. No. That he understands the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, mental prosperity. We said how that it culminates in the soundness of your mind. How much your mind is well developed and deployed. Remember I stressed last week and I will stress it again. That Christianity does not make people fools. Are you getting my point? Christianity does not make people just relevant as far as heaven and kingdom things are concerned. Christianity helps people to add value to mankind here and now. It says you are the light of this system. You give illumination and it says you are the salt of the earth. You preserve and you add taste. You add value. So the church is relevant even in society. We are not just relevant as far as speaking in tongues and falling down and getting up. And this is one of the reasons why in many regions of this nation, the church is not respected. They are not seeing our socioeconomic impact. They are not seeing us affect various strata of society. Hallelujah. I think I did a teaching there, Conquering Cosmos also. You can get the teaching where I told us that the gospel is not just a message. It's not just tract. It's an ideology. Taking the value system of the kingdom to the various mountains of human existence. Education, politics and governance, finance, um, religion, and media, arts, and so on and so forth. You can get the teaching. Hallelujah. So your ability to train your mind to build yourself. And the ability to be free from worry and fear how many of you know that there are so many people they are blessed but they are afraid of their wealth because they are wondering what if i die all this kind of mental torture is not mental prosperity you can be rich financially and be poor mentally praise the lord bible says the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number three bodily prosperity we are not completely prosperous if we remain in sickness and weakness and so on and so forth. To be prosperous health-wise, it means to be free from sickness, to be free from diseases, to be free from infirmity. And then it also means to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness. All of these yokes, curses, all kinds of things that people inherit. Hallelujah. You can be free from it. And when you are free from that, you are prosperous bodily. The fourth one, and that's going to be the subject of our discussion, is financial prosperity. Say financial prosperity. It means freedom from poverty, freedom from lack. There is a difference between poverty and lack, and today we are going to see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Poverty is a state of um, lack of productivity. There is nothing you are doing completely. 
And as a result of that, you do not have the ability to add value, whether by ignorance or demonic oppression or whatever it is. And then there is nothing that you can exchange for any kind of material um, blessing. But lack is a perpetual state of insufficiency, right? So someone who suffers lack, you have, but it's always not enough. Always. It's not like there is nothing. It's just always not enough. Hallelujah. So financial prosperity is freedom from poverty, freedom from lack, and take note, you must write this, and the effects that come with them. There is an effect that poverty does to the life. Listen, if poverty was neutral, there would be no need to attack the issue of poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means if poverty did not cause anything to anybody, it did nothing just neutral like the air, we would not pay any attention to the issue of poverty. But we are, we are taking the issue of poverty personal because of what it causes to our lives, our families, the society and the advancement of the kingdom at large. Hallelujah. Praise God. It also means having abundant financial supplies. I'm giving you the definition of financial prosperity. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it. If you do not have a means to replenish and sustain, you are not rich. It doesn't matter what you have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not enough to have abundant financial supply. Anybody can dash you money. Are you getting me now? Any well-wisher can love you and dash you money. You can inherit wealth, for instance. But the ability to replenish it and sustain that flow is what makes you financially prosperous. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto us. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us. We arise. It's our time. We arise. It's our season. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto us. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us everything that was lost shall be returned unto us everything that was stolen shall be restored unto us we arise it says arise and shine for your light is come tonight your light is coming in the name of jesus number five relational prosperity that's the last index for or dimension of prosperity in the kingdom. Having quality relationships that give you opportunities to express love, to express care, to improve yourself, to share and to impact lives. You must have an opportunity to bless people. You must have an opportunity to interact, to be a blessing to people. There are many people who are financially prosperous, but relationally they are very poor. They walk alone, they have no friend, nobody to bless. Nobody can say it's because of this person I was blessed today. Hallelujah. So that kind of money, that kind of blessing, that at the end of the journey of your life, please bring some more people. If there are more people, they can just come and sit. At least they can leave the front rows. They can just share maybe a few of them. Or a few of you, some of the leaders, your leaders, you can just go there so that some people can come to the front. Hallelujah. A few people who have the opportunity, please come and sit down. Praise God. How many of you, lift, please look at me. How many of you have seen people who you know maybe in their lifetime maybe now they're in their old age they were blessed but they didn't lift anybody have you seen people like that 
they didn't bless anybody nobody went to school because of them they didn't feed anybody they didn't help the poor there are people like that and so maybe while they were working nobody got a job because of them they didn't bless anybody some of them were politicians their environments were not developed and these people come down and in their old age they are left alone because they did not invest in the life of anyone relational prosperity is so important because by and large in your life that's one of the things that will matter are you getting me there are some people who will never be poor in this life because of the those who have been raised and lifted because of them hallelujah for instance my children will never suffer in this life again you see that whatever price i've paid for them even if you hate me you will love them one day you will just look at them i'm sure maybe my daughter will be made head girl you know all this kind of solidarity whether she's qualified or not see there are you can create a a platform for generational blessings look at what we inherited from our parents praise god they didn't do anything they just produce enemies and you just got up and your uncle said you are the son of who you say i'm the son of this person you say that's right because of something that happened when you were not there that means relationships matter are you getting my message now your your quality of relationship with there are some things that you will get for free on account of relationship hallelujah some of us because of the relationships that we are making with certain people here now you may never need to pay for certain things in your life hallelujah praise the lord One day someone will come to a showroom to buy the car and maybe it's Ken that is the owner of the showroom. Ah! Sam, I remember you. He said, come in. The inner one, not that one outside. There is the inner one, the holy, the holy of holies. And he says, please, pick anyone. He says, see, it's been a while. And Sam is so blessed that when he takes it, he will go back and deposit money in his account and say it's a seed. So it's not a product of insufficiency. There is a realm like that. Poor people never know there is a realm like that, but there is. Hallelujah. So as you're sitting down right now, I want you to imagine your two, three, four, five children standing and saying, Daddy, you better hear what they are saying. We are coming. <laughs> Today is Valentine. Love. Love means responsibility. Hallelujah. Don't ever let your children look at you one day and say, what happened? Is it that you didn't hear what others were? What happened? And you know, we are preserving all these messages. In the future, they will play it and you will see yourself when you were small. Your child will see you and say, I thought you said you, you were not born again then. That's you there. Why are we still broke? You know, then our parents lied to us. Some of them said they took first all through. Some of them said all kinds of things eventually we said this your story is not connecting you know? why are we still suffering like this <laughs> parents we're <well>, sorry <laughs> relational prosperity now look at me for those of you who can choose to neglect quality relationships I'm just, this is not a discussion, but I just feel it's important I point it because there are certain people that have this disdain and disregard for people. You're not as fine as me. You don't speak English as me. You're not doing this. I'm wearing a designer's. You're wearing something else. Praise the Lord. And we create all of this stratification. Tonight, God is speaking to you. This is your first message tonight. Repent quickly hallelujah because let me tell you something that sister you see sitting down she may have only one dress but there is something happening inside her the bible says the vision in the end he said do it tarries it will not speak at the beginning but in the end it will speak this is why we i respect and i honor people so much including these children some of you just look at them and nod 
Value relationships. Value relationships. Many of our parents are crying for help today and there's nobody to help them because they neglected everybody. Some of them were the only ones to go to school and they turned and looked at the illiterates and said, you are not my class. And then the tables turned. This life. Everybody has his shell. The Bible says time and chance is a mystery that happens to all men. So whether you take advantage of your opportunity or not, God is just to turn the table. And one day it will get to somebody you've been laughing at. And maybe when you met the person, the person was a drunkard. But by the time the table would have reached, you would be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, with sufficient knowledge to take advantage of that opportunity. Value relationships. Some of you, you cannot keep friends for five, five days. You are fighting with everybody. You just believe everybody has a problem. And you won't adjust. Hallelujah. There are many of us that will not forgive people that hurt us since they were in secondary school. You just turn and you saw the person sitting in Koinonia and say, God, what is this person doing here? Because when you rise, see, if you don't believe in people when they are nothing, when they rise, they will forget about you too. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? relationships and they brought a crippled man who dash monkey banana who would take that crippled man to the to the palace relationships everybody say relationships relationships can give you what money may not give you there are people on account of relationships they got jobs without interview you've been seeing your roommate because they are humble you don't know who their father is you're just speaking against everybody and feeling your this and that and one day you may go to their house and find somebody there that your own father has been trying to access his office. See, let me tell you, relationships are powerful. This is a very powerful message. I believe God just wants me to drop this right now. When I see old women and very old men, the question I ask is, where are their children? Two, where are their friends? Because they had an opportunity to take advantage of their youthful life. Are you following me now? Many of them did not take advantage of it. And a man, a man at 75, coming to move around in a house and say he wants to be a gate man. I said it last week. For 75 years, where were we, his friends? No, it's, it, it's impossible that all his friends will be failures. You mean nobody could help him? That is coming now to be a gate man to take five or ten thousand. I'm not insulting the occupation. Are you getting my point? I'm saying that there, there is always opportunity. Many of us now are begging for things we would get for free because we neglected people years ago that are in position to bless us now. There are many of us, maybe if you would have seen me 15 years ago or so, some of you will look. And say all kinds of things. No. Value people now. Especially when they are hearing what you are hearing too. Look, let me tell you. The word can give you an inheritance. Never conclude on any man who is getting revelation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many wealthy people today. There are people in the presidency. There are multi Bill Gates had classmates. True or false? All of these wealthy people had classmates. Some of those classmates are still begging today. And Bill Gates makes overnight what some of them may never make in the lifetime. Is it that he's so greedy that he cannot bless them? They are giving millions to charity. Can they help their friends? Neglect. This is a message to someone this night. Today is Valentine's Day. Let me just press it in. Some of us have a habit of this disdain for people based on class or whatever parameters we have love people when you see us say turn around hug one another and all of this we're doing it for a reason we're doing it for a reason everybody say opportunity remember my message on activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny help us cherish very valuable relationships I'm not saying just hop in and out of any sinner's life and say they said we should have relationship. No. The Bible says have no business with the unfruitful works of darkness. Unfruitful. That means it doesn't bear fruit. There are some relationships that bear fruit. Hallelujah. 
it doesn't mean the people have to be perfect i'm not talking of love relationship now i'm just talking of general relationship the people may have their differences just like you have your own too correct people are not working with us because we are perfect there are some of you who hate me it's just that you like what i represent to the body and you are receiving it in peace praise the lord value relationships write it write it so that even after 10 years if you're looking at your notes you will see it. value relationships when you see people greet them greet them don't say i'm a pastor of so 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 ministry so what huh greet people you get up in the morning you pass people good morning huh don't look and say you know when i was in 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 ss3 that's when you were writing common interest so what let me tell you if age used to give food some of our parents will be resting by now relationships hallelujah right financial dominion what is financial dominion we defined it but let me define it again the ability to totally conquer lack to conquer poverty to conquer financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring is financial dominion financial dominion is the ability notice that word to totally when you understand that you find out that it's a journey for us the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and let's see some of the effects that they bring fear 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 number two insecurity many poor people are insecure the bible says money is a defense he said a rich man's words are harsh because he believes he's defended but a poor man uses entreaties always begging a life of begging greed many people are greedy because they have not attained that state of financial dominion greed what if i give where would the money come from again so someone can be dying and you can join people to say ah you are dying what happened whereas you can rush the person to the hospital but you are saying me too what i have is not much greed self-centeredness some of the effects that financial hardship brings self-centeredness many people are self-centered and part of the reason not all of the reason but part of the reason is this life of insufficiency self-centered they don't think about anybody just me myself what i have is not much you know if it was much we would have shared but now that is more please don't disturb me i can pray for you self-centeredness unrighteousness unrighteousness many people have gotten into sinful and shameful things because of money they've entered wrong relationships wrong marriages they have compromised given themselves freely and cheaply they've been involved in diabolic things all kinds of things because of poverty when you pay a man and say go and kill another person and i will give you hundred thousand or two hundred thousand that's terrible unrighteousness say in the name of jesus i will attain financial dominion and be free from all these things yeah. there are many people who live perpetually under fear will the landlord come and kick me out and we live in a time when a landlord can escalate the price of his rent to twice or three in places like abuja and now a family is stranded and there's almost nothing they can do about it hallelujah tonight we are going to be looking at the anatomy of god's economic system mm. grant us light oh god the anatomy of god's economic system 
the internal workings how does this thing work financial prosperity is not a mystery it's not magic there is a way this thing works and tonight i pray that god will open our eyes to understand hallelujah the anatomy of god's economic system blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah please let me have two people i like using people for example my brother ah, you sat in front sitting in front means you have volunteered one here hallelujah praise god now every time we examine anything any subject in the christian faith you must realize that oftentimes there are two dimensions there are two perspectives are you listening to me now there is the world's economic system everybody say the world's economic system that means the way that people in the world run their economy this world this system cosmos it has its economic system the way people get money the way people multiply it the way people become rich they have their system but the kingdom of god also has an economic system and if you are a citizen of the kingdom then you should understand how the system of heaven works the bible gives us a picture of this he said lay lay up for yourself treasures where so he began to give us a picture that there is a heavenly system that interacts with the earth that a man can be in the earth realm but he can make heavenly deposits are you getting my point now this is jesus speaking lay for yourself treasures and he tells us the limitations of this world system he said thieves can come all kinds of things can go wrong but there is a system that has another mode of operation and so tonight we want to examine this system everybody say heaven's economy say it again heaven's economy many of you are shocked because we've not been taught in church either because we have been made to believe that when you teach people about prosperity it is carnality but by now i know that every one of us here hate poverty is that true and we're not going to allow anybody just sit down and mislead us and make us believe that teaching about pr prosperity and the place of kingdom wealth is, is, is carnality. No, no, it's not at all. At all. There is a lot that the kingdom of God cannot, the, the advancement of the kingdom of God can be crippled when there is no finance. Hallelujah. So there are two economic systems. What's the first one? What's the first one? The world's economic system. And there is the second one. What is it? Hallelujah. Now, the fact that it is heaven's economy does not mean that it is not operational in this earth. Are you getting my point? Because this is where we are now. So we take the principles of the kingdom and we walk with it in this earth. And bless you, sir. Hallelujah. The anatomy of God's economic system. The first thing I want us to examine is the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. Why does God bless? This is, this is one of the things you must understand when you are exploring the economy. Don't talk about money. Don't talk about business. Don't talk about all of these things. The first thing you need to know is why does God bless the believer? Why do we have to be blessed in the kingdom? What is the role of of wealth and prosperity as far as kingdom advancement is concerned why does god bless us when a herbalist when a man goes to meet a herbalist and he says baba i want charm say for what say i want to be rich the man gives him conditions is that true he said remember why we are blessing you and here are the conditions the day you compromise that money disappears agreed agreed and the man goes back and then things begin to work for him there is a system so why does god bless us because if you do not know why god prospers people you will misuse prosperity when it comes are, are you seeing why lots of people misuse prosperity they don't know the purpose of prosperity in the kingdom 
so they get money and do lots of crazy things you know i i i told you i think it was last week i don't know if i said it here or maybe during the final year or workers retreat any one of them hallelujah i watched a documentary how that the son of the sultan of brunel or so i think one of these very wealthy billionaires hallelujah his child i think if i if i remember rightly about 22 years old when he was celebrating his 22 year old birthday the father gave him 250 million dollars as a birthday gift the wealthiest man of god in africa is worth about 190 million us dollars after years of operating this world but now one son who clocked 22 years listen to me i want to challenge you tonight the father just gave him money and the boy didn't know 22 years from a rich family will he buy food in a restaurant a man whose empire is built with gold and the boy didn't know what to do so he went to go and rent a yacht and he brought in half of hollywood stars half Praise the Lord. Half. Just to come and enjoy. Drink beer. Waste away. Become soul hunters. And he wanted to become friends with a popular, one of these secular musicians. And he knew that going to go and meet him the way a poor man, a poor man uses entreaties. And he knew that that way would not work. So they measured his size and he made a shoe for the musician made of diamonds and presented it as an offer to become his friend do you think it will work at once at once it worked at once now listen that's a lot of money spent on vanity and the truth is compared to the about maybe 16 billion or thereabout that his father had that's a chicken change that's pocket money are you getting what i'm saying don't just start fantasizing because this is the world system there are, of course any man that does not give his life to christ no matter what you have in this world you are not advancing the cause of the kingdom you must be advancing another cause everybody's advancing something whether you know it or not are you getting my point so why does god bless us never forget this in your journey to financial freedom and financial dominion the day you forget it god is not entitled to bless you please follow me because the rules that govern kingdom wealth are very strict your violation of them will cost you so much number one the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one to live a comfortable life i shared this during the kingdom wealth summit in 2010 number one to live a comfortable life that's one of the reasons why god blesses us in the kingdom let me say it again god is not glorified in our poverty say it after me god is not glorified when i'm poor say one more time god is not glorified when i'm poor now say God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Say one more time. God desires that I prosper and live a comfortable life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing wrong that you own a house that has a worship room with sound system all around that is automated that wakes you up in worship and a door that recites a scripture before opening is not vanity don't just clap oh. many clapped many clapped like this this is not to make you fantasize what is wrong with just sitting down and having options and saying in the next two weeks i don't want to eat this food and not feel guilty and not feel bad hallelujah what is wrong with being able to live a comfortable life and send your children to good schools good schools with very good standard 
Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong. Living a very comfortable life. You sleep in peace. You wake up in peace. God wants us to live a comfortable life. Now many of us have not had the experience of that comfort. Maybe just a few of us. But I'm telling you, God wants you to be comfortable. Say, God wants me to be comfortable. I want you to believe it no matter how you have suffered. Say, it, God wants me to be comfortable. You know, some of us have suffered so much as we are saying it. Say, we are saying, ah, God, God wants you to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Because when you are comfortable, let me tell you one of the greatest benefits of prosperity. It gives you options. It gives you the ability to choose hallelujah poor people never have the opportunity to choose whatever comes they go with it hallelujah it gives you options you can choose and in that choosing you will now choose according to the way of the lord praise the lord so to live a comfortable life number two this is very important why does god bless us in the kingdom to finance the cause of christ on the earth to finance the cause of Christ to advance the kingdom never forget this this is one of the reasons why God one of the major reasons as a matter of fact why God blesses men in the kingdom the world may have their system of operation but when you are a kingdom citizen if you want to be open to the prosperity of God and to command financial dominion then you must understand that one of the major reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom is to advance the cause of Christ. What is the cause of Christ? Soul winning. To build the house of God. To finance the kingdom. Finance soul winning. Bless the lives of of the vessels that he's using to increase and improve people to better the lives of people hallelujah very important now i wrote something here and i want you to write it it's god's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities i'll say it again it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities this is so important i know that there are kingdom financiers those who are called and anointed into this apostolic ministry of providing major financial supplies for kingdom activities but can i tell you part of every believer's responsibility is to contribute financially among other reasons in the building of the kingdom say amen if you believe that so financial dominion is not a wish i told you it's a it's a principle it's a path it has a formula if you can walk with it then god will honor you otherwise you are not entitled as simple as that you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to be eligible it is god's plan for every believer is god's desire for everyone seated and hearing me and even for the online community is god's desire for everyone to be part of advancing the kingdom listen we're still going to discuss other sections but you must come to a point in your life where out of every resource god gives you there must be something in it that goes for the kingdom it's not just a special um a, un, until you are prompted and all of that that it is part of your life that you're going to provide financial supplies for the kingdom it is very very important hallelujah that's the second reason the third reason why god blesses us in the kingdom is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical way to reveal the love of God and God so loved the world that he that you must give your love expression in this dying world to reveal the love of God 
to a dying world in a very practical way to help the poor to help the hungry to be committed in charity to be committed in community projects and nation building all of these things are part of the reason why god blesses us in the kingdom that means god's blessings is not just limited to the house of god first the house of god but also to give the world an opportunity to see that god is love i wrote here acts of love and kindness that moves beyond religion beyond culture beyond gender and beyond social status when you come and build a school for a community for instance and you say everyone in this community will pay the teachers for 10 years teach these children whether you know them or not that's revealing the love of god when there are all kinds of charity activities and you bless people you help the needy you provide for the poor the bible says he that gives to the poor lends to the lord how do you borrow a rich man money hallelujah let me tell you something how many of you have seen maybe one of your uncle that is very very rich and maybe at a point he needs one thousand now and he said please give me one thousand will you give him very quick step. who knows maybe as he's giving you back he won't give you that same one thousand so when a rich man says please borrow me very quickly say I, I have he said no no let me just say mm, it's my own i have because you know that when he's giving you back you'll say ah you out of this abundance so let's just take this one and you just look and you see that it has multiplied ridiculously so the bible says when you give to the poor is the same thing as god saying borrow me money i will return it to you ah i will do goodness god every rich man blesses according to his ability that means he first looks at his ability and from that revelation he will bless you so the bible says my god this is Paul speaking. Shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Praise the Lord. These are the three major reasons in the kingdom why God blesses us. Let's review it quickly. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to advance or to finance the cause of, the, of Christ on earth. Use the word advance, not finance. Advance, advance. The financing is to bring that advancement. I will build my church. He says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Praise the Lord. When it was time for him to build the temple, they called on people and from the abundance that they brought, the tabernacle was built. Do you know, listen, let me prove this thing to you um, scripturally. The Bible says, when Israel was about to leave Egypt, God made Egypt to give them money. That was the first wealth transfer we see in the Bible. Are you following me now? This, we are going to come to the issue of wealth transfer. So we see the first wealth transfer in scripture. That overnight, someone who had oppressed people for 430 years, he gave them money. But many of them did not know. He gave them sheep and oxen so that it can sponsor their journey. Are you following me? That journey is like the journey of the believer to the promised land now so financial resources were given but because they did not know why god blessed them later on he would demand of them that they bring from that resource because they did not know they used the money to build an idol the gold and everything eventually they built an idol that's what a lot of people are doing every time you do not know why god blesses you will build an idol with it are you following me please this is a very important teaching. I want you to pay rapt attention. So God blesses you so that you can advance the course of the kingdom. Wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. It's a trust. Never forget this. Wealth in the kingdom wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement is not an accomplishment you satisfy these rules and god trusts you with it please understand 
That's why there is no boasting. Any rich man in the kingdom that brags unnecessarily does not understand the operation of the kingdom fully. Trust. And he gave unto one. Please come. Three of you. Look at me. The Bible says, he gave unto one what? Five talents. Did they beg him for it? He gave them. He gave them. He gave them according to their several abilities. Right? After a while, he came back and demanded accountability. Write this word down. Stewardship. Please sit down. Write this word down. Stewardship. This is, this is, this is a word that you must never forget if you want to be blessed in the kingdom. There are no owners of prosperity as it were. Financial prosperity. No. No. There are stewards that God commits wealth to for their personal blessing and to be a blessing. The day you stop being a steward, you are not entitled to the wealth of the kingdom. Everybody say, I am a steward. What does it mean to be a steward? A caretaker. A caretaker. That means your greatest pursuit in the kingdom is to become trustworthy. Worthy enough that God can recommend you and can trust you. There are some people who will never be rich. No matter how much they pray and fast. Even if they enter one gallon of anointing oil and come out. You know why? They are not trustworthy. In this day and age, let me tell you. In this prophetic season of authentic wealth transfer. God is looking for distribution channels. God is looking for houses. Men he can trust. That you say lord you know i i told god something i said lord i know that many people have given in the kingdom but i want you to trust me and see what i will do for your kingdom and i mean it i'm disabusing many of our mindsets right now about prosperity because there are many of us that until now all we are thinking about is just ourselves let me make quick money hammer sharp sharp marry one lady quickly have children build a house enjoy my life and go back to the village by december and say all you suffering ones how far god has been faithful if that is your mindset forget about kingdom wealth forget about kingdom wealth that you know that lord i'm a distribution center trust me trust me with insight trust me with resources trust me with capacity he gave out of trust he gave one five talent that means he saw that the one with five talent was the one who could manage it well. Then the one with two and the one with one. And after a while, his point was proven to be correct. Because the one with one talent didn't do anything with it. The one with ten multiplied it and it collected. You see, I said something years ago and I was accused of it. I said in this wealth transfer, there are believers who their wealth will also be transferred. Those who do not understand and recognize that the purpose of wealth is to build the house of God. In this country, there are believers with houses, estates, and there is nothing they are doing for the kingdom. They are not doing anything for the kingdom. Only to get angry and talk, fly around. A church is saying we have a convention. And maybe the total cost for the convention is maybe three or four million and that man is paying business class 2.5 right first class 2.5 and in one week he would travel four or five countries spend more than 10 or 15 million and come back and sit in the church and just keep watching when you do not take up kingdom responsibility you will never be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom are you are you getting something right now greed self-centeredness is an enemy to financial dominion are you getting blessed many of us do not know that we are the ones who are stopping god from being a great blessing for us and to us 
because of our greed we are self-centered there is nothing the kingdom i can never go to a place and not find a way of participating financially in the advancement of the kingdom there are many of us here where there is nothing you have done for the kingdom i'm not talking about offering offering is, is because we were religiously raised to believe that you come to church with something do you have the kingdom at heart David sat down and thought to himself he said how can I be in a royal palace made of gold there is nothing I want and my God does not have a place he said although you, you are in heaven the earth is your footstool you do not need a house but me I must build you a house the tabernacle of God cannot be outside and a multi-millionaire is inside there are many men of God living in houses that are worth hundreds of billions and the carpet in their church the carpet in their church that is 20,000 cannot be changed don't tell me you have passion for the kingdom are you understanding what I'm saying a man will buy a car of 40 million pastor and a church is struggling with rent. How much is the rent? 500,000. What is it to just come and slip it in and say, Pastor, I am a kingdom citizen. I may not be a member of this church, but I know why God blesses me. Quietly, without chorusing around, create a special chair for me close to the pastor. Are you an elder? No. Are you a pastor? No. Who are you? I gave 500,000. Let me show you why many people so that when you see a man that god is blessing don't be angry there is a price they have paid and it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you understanding what i'm saying this is a reorientation when the school of prosperity examining how the internal workings of the blessings of the kingdom notice i've not mentioned anything business I've not mentioned anything money self. I've not mentioned entrepreneurship because that's what many people, this is the problem I have with a lot of success and business people. They just buy cut every of these things and they tell people open a shop, look for 50,000 or 100,000 and it will work. You think it works like that? We will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise so what is your heart for god lord i want you to bless me god is saying really do you understand my conditions listen brothers and sisters let me shock you prosperity does not just respond to prayer alone there are many people who believe that just by praying, uh -uh, your heart is a great issue that must be examined. There are so many people who are so greedy. Every time they talk about money, let me show you something. Read Psalms 122 in NIV. Can we get NIV? Psalm 122 verse 9. I found this scripture years ago and it, it hit my spirit. I said, goodness, my God. Psalms 122. Last verse. Verse 9 in NIV. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? God is challenging us in this place because he wants to bless us. I prophesy to you is your season. In the name of Jesus what kept your family members will not keep you there are some of us this is the prayer that our parents have been praying for years and say lord will a savior not arise will a savior not arise is this how we will die will a savior not arise many of us have prayed and fasted because of the things happening in our families the lord brings salvation for us in the name of jesus christ while they prepare to, to pull that up, I want you to understand that every time God increases you and your heart tends towards wickedness, he can withdraw the, the blessings. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why after 20 years, a man can be blessed, but after 20 years, he can be so reduced and even be begging. Hallelujah. Everybody read Psalms 122 verse 9. One to read. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Is that in your Bible? That means, Lord, I'm not just seeking all these millions and billions. How many cars can you enter at once? Even if you have 50 cars, you can't pieces your body to drop in different cars. You can only enter one. Is that true? So if it's just for yourself, you just need a cash flow of a few hundreds of thousands and it will do you. No matter how extravagant you are. But for the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Lord, I'm seeking these billions. I'm seeking these thousands so that you can sponsor a TV program for 10 years quietly and say, man of God, stop thinking about money. You concentrate on praying. Look at how many struggling ministers with an authentic message from God. But there is no voice given to them. Hallelujah. Because of prosperity, because of your house i will seek your prosperity what do you need one billion for as a person bill gates is living off five percent of his wealth and he's still a billionaire he's giving 95 percent of the wealth to build a melinda gates foundation yet with the five billion he's still a billionaire do you know why god searched around the body of christ and did not find many worthy believers and he chose to use cyrosis until the believers are prepared there is no not there's none on record that i know there is no man of god or minister of the gospel that i know who is a billionaire in dollars not one the closest is kenneth kenneth copeland the only person that i can say has gotten there he's not exactly a man of god is peter j daniels the man with the largest real estate company in Australia. What is the problem? We are here shouting massive kingdom wealth transfer. And there is nobody. God TV. God TV. Hallelujah. God TV. They are looking for about 6 to 10 million dollars to complete a project for the house of God. Look at the people who have been blessed. 6 to 10 million. Brothers and sisters, are there no people on earth? That can give a prostitute 10 million for one night. Dollars. I'm not talking of Naira. And it does not shake them. All these rich men go for extravagant outings. And buy one wine. One. One wine. About maybe 10 or 20 or 50 thousand dollars. One wine. And they will order cartons of it. And believers are here begging. Please. Begging. Psalm 22 verse 5. Give 22 dollars. 5 cents. All these kinds of suffering. Something is wrong. It's not, listen, we are not mocking them, but I believe that our generation will do something that has not been seen. You better believe it. I believe strongly that this generation will do something. We are truly this omega generation that will do something that will keep the world at a standstill. And they will see how we are so separated from the blessing. Are you getting blessed? Forbes 100 billionaires, the top 100 people in the whole world. There are just about maybe five or six people who are professing believers. And that's the Walton family, Sam Walton and all the other people. Most of the other people are atheists, heterogeneous religions coming from wherever. Where is the church in this? Members of the Illuminati and all of this and all of that. There is poverty in the body of Christ. Even what we celebrate that has turned the head of some people. Let me tell you, that's not prosperity. It will be shadows compared to that which is coming. Believe me, it will happen. It's part of the prophecies that must happen before Christ comes. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. And the desires of nations will come. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be a shaking. This is what is happening. The global recession is a shaking. So God is positioning us. Don't ever belittle yourself. 
we live in a world where every time we are talking like this you say there are other people do you know what God can do with you he told Gideon you are a mighty man oh thou mighty man of valor hallelujah are you learning something let me show you what God does every time there is perpetual misuse perpetual misuse of his blessings Hosea chapter 4 verse 7 is someone getting blessed tonight you will thank God for this truth that you are hearing blessed are the ears that are hearing this don't trivialize it at all hallelujah everybody read want to read as they were increased so they sinned against me therefore I will change their glory into shame this is why after 30 years a man that probably listen there are some things that are not caused by demons is how God's technology works hallelujah Solomon came to a point where he said everything in the book of Ecclesiastes everything that my eyes saw I desired everything that in such that insatiable lust for just everything money is a wild animal it can tear you into pieces if you don't control it that's why the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them hallelujah people make all kinds of nasty statements people say all kinds of things because they believe they have money they can hire police they can do all kinds of things praise the lord i want you to know that this is the reason why god blesses us never forget every time you get money just know that this is why god has blessed me there is a portion of this that is for me there is a portion of this that is for king, the kingdom hallelujah if you understand this you're already in, in a very great you are a, a landslide uh, uh, progression towards financial prosperity spiritual laws of wealth and abundance now please pay attention we'll start talking about the laws now we've seen why god blesses us we want to see how he blesses us spiritual laws remember in our course curriculum when i read it for you last week sorry for those who didn't come last week we we read out a course curriculum just just follow we're really sorry i forgot to read it spiritual laws of wealth and abundance even so come yeshua come and even so come take your bride away take us into new realms oh god how my soul longs to see your face my lord even so even so come yeshua come what are the laws there are spiritual laws brothers and sisters that govern the manifestation of wealth in the kingdom every herbalist look at me if you see this brother today come my brother if by next week koinonia this guy just comes with a what range rover sports maybe or whatever it is just just keep that one let's let's hurry up praise god and he brings a car and he just comes with some kind of regalia and everything you can just look at him and say my brother in one week where did you go to you won't ask him what he did you say where did you go to somehow we associate wealth with the spirit realm once you see a man that mysteriously rose up to wealth they say no way leave this guy's money this guy went somewhere not he did something he went somewhere so we and that somewhere in our mind is that he went to a herbalist or a shrine is that true so if you believe that consulting a herbalist can make you rich it tells you that there are spiritual laws hallelujah bless you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 please 
Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Shiba katalaba katalaba. This was a condition for prosperity. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do what? Observe and do. There is something to do. There are laws to live by. It's not automatic. It's not the issue of receive prosperity. There is a dimension where prayer comes in. But I want you to know that there are laws. Everybody say there are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Say one more time. There are laws that govern wealth and abundance in the kingdom. Let me tell you, if you do not know these laws, I don't care whether you have, you have PhD in finance and economics. You will struggle eventually in your life and you will not experience true prosperity. There are many people who believe that all it takes is just go to school, go and get a job, do this and that. Wonderful. We'll still talk about that. But let me tell you, prosperity in the kingdom first starts by your compliance to spiritual laws. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say spiritual laws. Oh, there are laws. There are laws. Just like there is the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. If per adventure you climb a building and try to fall, that's when you will know that there is a law. Hallelujah. There are spiritual laws. The first spiritual law is the law of tithing. The law of tithing. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus, excuse me, 27 verse 30. Everyone, please, can we read? One to read. It is the Lord's and it is holy unto God. How many of the tithe? All the tithe. It says, all the tithe of the land. Your tithe. What is your tithe? The word tithe comes from the word a tenth it is a tenth ten percent of your income please write ten percent of whatever blessing god br brings to your life now because we operate an economy that has to do with finance money currency because of currency now we no longer carry bags of rice on our head to come and drop and just say, this is my tithe and all of that. Hallelujah. The Jews were an agrarian people and because of that, that was why all of these things were written. But for us now, it's just your finances because it represents your highest value and sacrifice in terms of your physical impute and the reward you get from it. 10%. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'm going to say something that sounds very controversial. There are people who preach that you should give 30%, stretch your faith and give 30% and 40%. Because it is money, nobody will refuse it. But that's not, the Bible says obedience is better than, there are other opportunities to sow into the kingdom. Call tight what it is. Are you getting my point? Now, there are a few times where God gave certain people customized instructions that were, were just a product of their relationship with God. You cannot carry your personal experience and lord it over people. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that they make people bring 50%, 100%, bring everything and say, I'm, there is first fruit. There are lots of other things. We'll discuss it. Your tithe is 10%. You can give the 10% and give every other thing. There are many avenues. We are going to discuss that. But listen, I'm telling you now. Your tithe is your 10%. There is a reason why God said 10. He would have said 2. Or you would have said 21 to 50%. It's your tithe. Choose anyone. God is very meticulous and he's exact. 10% is your tithe. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. 
Another word for the law of Titan is the law of open heavens. It's the spiritual law. One of the spiritual law that is responsible for opening your heavens. Not just financially, but even financially. Somebody is changing tonight in the name of Jesus. The law of open heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8. Will a man rob God? Question. Answer it. Answer it for yourself. Will a man rob God? It's an encouragement. It was a question, but use it now to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Put your name there where a man is. One to go. Will Joshua Selman rob God? Some of you, as you are saying it, God is saying, you see, this is what has been happening. There are many robbers of God in the house of God. Many robbers of God. And please listen. Some of you hear this and you think it's some gimmicks by pastors to collect your money. Let me say something. Everybody is an authority somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? A professor is an authority in his field. Not everywhere. Don't listen to garbages by intellectuals. They are not spiritual people. They don't know how heaven's economy works. You cannot go and meet a man who is not a spiritual man. And you are telling him to help you analyze the principles of the kingdom. The Bible says the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. It doesn't add up to them. There are many people, because a man is sound intellectually, does not mean he has spiritual understanding. There are many politicians, many people who insult pastors, genuine men of God, and say all kinds of things because they think that because they have political knowledge, it means they have spiritual knowledge. And they take politics. Get out! Leave us in the house of God. We stay with God day and night and we understand. This is our area of grace. Let us function. Don't let any politician just come in and all kinds of people who are misleading people in the body of Christ. Being manipulated by demons and stopping people from entering their breakthrough. I know that there are abuses here and there. But let me tell you the truth. Any man that is not faithful in tithing is scripturally entitled to poverty. Scripturally. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge... The serpent is permitted on legal grounds to strike. Are you listening to me, please? So beware. There are people who all they do spiritually is they analyze, they downgrade spiritual things and just look at it from an intellectual plane. And when they add one plus one and they don't know how it will become seven, they say it's wrong. It may not be wrong. Just say you do not understand. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And there are many of us, especially some of us, as young as we are, we have already imbibed this religious mindset to scrutinize and criticize everything we don't understand. We bring it into our religious mold. And once we find out that it doesn't add up, rather than with all humility, seeking to understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the wise men saw the star. Is that true? When they saw the star, they knew that this star was spectacular. It was leading them somewhere. They didn't have sufficient knowledge to understand what it meant. But with all humility, they followed the light. And that light brought them to Jesus. There are many people who need to humble themselves. The recession has humbled a lot of arrogant people who laugh and scorn at the church. Let me tell you, individuals may fail, but the church of God as an entity is progressing. It cannot fail because Christ is the head of that body. Hallelujah. The law of tithing. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? This is where you have robbed God. In tithes and offerings. Verse 9. This is a consequence. This one is not the cause of the law. This one is the cause of disobedience. Are you getting my point now? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye how many? All the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. 
So God wants that there be abundance, that there may be resources to carry out activities in my house. And God says, if you have done your own part, prove me and see the things I'll begin to do in your life. Number one, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, if I will not pour you out a blessing. Number three, Okay, a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you sow. It could be your job. It could be your marriage. It could be whatever it is that you're doing. It says, and he, so that devourer is not a thing. It's a spirit. It's a living being. And he, that devourer, shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. There are lots of people with all kinds of premature happenings in their lives. Things that you know, this one is the signature of the devourer. Thus said the Lord, verse 12. And all nations shall testify. They will call you the blessed of the Lord. He said, for you shall be a delightsome, a well-desired land. Seven prophetic blessings for being faithful in just one law. One of the laws. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? You must make up your mind. Open your eyes tonight, brothers and sisters. And see where the devil has been robbing you of your financial prosperity the first thing that happens is that many believers say if i give where will i get another one question how did the first one come your tithing is a proof of trust hallelujah if you cannot bring out 10 percent of your money and say lord i trust you i come because i love you and i come because i know that your word is true if you're not a faithful tither don't get angry at god many of our parents get angry maybe they are collecting two or three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand and they look forty thousand to go and give a pastor are we stupid like that? Don't turn our head. This is a problem. They think they are giving a pastor. They think they are giving the man of God. Are you getting my point now? What you do not know, listen. The Bible says, if you do this to the least of my people, you have done it unto me. When you come and give in the house of God, please listen to me. If you give tithe that is for the house of God and the man of God eats the tithe, it's between him and God. God, God will not hold you accountable for it. You have done your own part. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Oh, but there is faithfulness. The, the, the rewards of faithfulness are endless. There are many of our parents struggling. They've been trying to build one house for 10 years, 20 years. When the house is almost completed, somebody will do something from the village, everything will be destroyed again. The moment, have you seen families like that? The moment money enters, everybody gets sick until the last time finishes, then everybody will be fine by themselves. That's the devourer. Brothers and sisters, that's the devourer. There is a place that your tithe pays or there's a role that it plays in the kingdom. You can choose to believe what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Could it be that many of us have been robbed of entering these dimensions of blessings? Some of us go and tell our parents these things in love. There are some of us here that are parents. We have children. We've not been practicing the law of tithing. I want you to know that this is one of the irrefutable spiritual laws. Even unbelievers give 10 percent they don't call it tight but almost all the multi-million and multi-billion corporations dedicate at least 10 percent of their money and they say it's for charity are you following me now if a believer plants during dry season there is every tendency that you still suffer although he's a believer is that true 
if an arm robber comes to plant during rainy season the rain will come because he aligned with the season and the principles that agriculture brings this is how lots of unbelievers they are interplaying kingdom principles and it's working for them tonight god is giving you an opportunity to make a decision hallelujah was he going to continue but while you are seated in the next two minutes i want you to pray and say lord grace i've not been a faithful titan don't bow your head pray pray open your mouth and pray there are many of us some of you outside wherever you are please this is the this is a serious business your children this this adherence to these laws will determine whether 10 years from now, 5 years from now, you will be part of those crying together with your children or you will break certain cycles in your family. Some of us, as you are hearing this right now, you may be young, but God is counting on you to break some chains. Enough is enough. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord Grace, say, Kata, ba, 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 ba. I have robbed you and I am sorry. I take responsibility, oh God. Many of us have, have yielded to fear. You are not supposed to, to bring your tithe because you are afraid. God is a loving God. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. How can God rob you? God is no man's debtor. God does not rob men. Please lift your voice and pray. Cry for grace, grace, oh God. From today, I make up my mind that I will be a faithful tighter, not out of fear, not out of religion, but out of revelation. I see that this is a key. I will teach my children how to tight. I will teach my workers how to tight. I will teach my family members to tight. I will guide them and help them to be faithful in tithing so that the heavens will be open no power in existence will stop the law of tithing if you insist and say lord i'm ready to comply god is more than able before you begin to abuse god and insult him and say he's not helping my family i'm opening your eyes tonight to see the loopholes Business without tithing will end up in failure. Ministry without tithing will end up in failure. A corporation without tithing, a, a non tithing family, are, they are entitled to financial hardship. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Praise the Lord. Let me say a few more things on tithing. Listen. If you are a business owner here, I want you to know that tithing does not just apply to a person. Hallelujah. When Abraham went to go and rescue Lot, right? When he came back with all of the blessings, it was not only him. He was representing many people. The Bible says in Genesis 14 that when he came back, he took a tenth of everything and brought it to Melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And his destiny opened up. The great Abraham. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we do not owe God one naira as a ministry in tithing. The finance department, there is a standard rule in this place. Before we do anything with finance, the tithe comes out. When we started the school of ministry and missions, even that, no matter what we are raising money for in Koinonia, the tithe must go to God. Are you understanding this? So don't just think that these are things we are just saying. You must make up your mind. If you cannot commit to God your 10%, then 
then it means you do not trust that he's able to bless and multiply you. You want to be a billionaire. You know what is the title of one billion? Hundred million. You think you can carry hundred million and just go and give like that? We are going to pray when we are done. One of the graces that we must receive is the giving grace. Hallelujah. The giving grace. The giving grace. There are many people that do not have, if you don't have, it is not human to carry money like this and take to the house of God and just go and drop. No. There is a grace. That was a grace that was upon the Macedonian church that they gave even beyond their limits. It's called the giving grace. Many of us do not have it. We are too greedy. Everything that enters your hand, you spend it on every kind of thing. Sickness, disease, any other thing but God. Hallelujah. Your tithe. What is the storehouse? Very quickly, let's clarify the issue of this storehouse once and for all. What is the storehouse? Because the Bible says, bring the tithe where? To the storehouse. The house of God. So what is the storehouse really? In scripture, there are three places that qualify to be called the storehouse. Number one, God's first idea of a storehouse from the Bible is the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment. Are you getting me? The place where you receive your greatest spiritual nourishment. For many people, is their local assemblies because you know they are there they are committed they are workers in the church and then they are giving number one the primary place where you receive your spiritual nourishment anywhere you receive your primary spiritual nourishment primary there means the major spiritual nourishment that is building your life that becomes the storehouse number two it could be a ministry not necessarily your ministry but a ministry that is committed to the works of the kingdom please get this a ministry that is committed genuinely to the works of the kingdom there are people for instance that sow in their tithe into maybe benihim ministry kenneth copeland ministry and it's not their local assembly as it were are you getting my point now? But it's a ministry that they believe their vision and they are given into soul winning, building and equipping believers. Listen, if you pay your tithe to a dead place where the activities of the kingdom are not happening, it can affect your harvest. It's in the Bible. It's the same thing as a farmer carrying a seed and going to throw around in a soil that is non-productive. The, the seed will not produce not because it is not good but a poor soil killed it <clears throat> number three now and these ones are they are special situations but I'm going to talk to you the vessel or the storehouse can also be an individual a man of God listen please I want you to listen very well so that you don't confuse what I'm saying a, it can be a man of God, a vessel. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there are conditions. Are you getting me? Now, there are ministries that the spiritual fathers or spiritual leaders in the Lord. Are you getting me? I'll give you an instance. Like Bishop Oyedeko, for instance. He is the president of a ministry. Aside from the tithe of the ministry, he has his own ministry. Are you getting me now? So, they can they take this time they don't just go maybe to redeem or kenneth copeland that vessel that they are drinking from on behalf of the people are you getting my condition now and they honor them with their tithe and they speak blessings abraham went to who melchizedek melchizedek was not a city he was a man and he brought his tithe to melchizedek and melchizedek pronounced a blessing upon him hallelujah There are lots of ministries, for instance, around that by the grace of God look up to us in ways for spiritual direction and they've committed themselves. They come and they tighten koinonia here. I don't even know. 
this is what they are doing are you getting me but i'm saying whether of these three there are special conditions for the third to occur because there are many men of god who just sit down and somebody in church just corner a few people and say i qualify to be the storehouse come and bless i've explained to you that the condition where a person can be a storehouse but the house of god is where you must bless is somebody getting blessed these are the benefits the first law thank you jesus wow let me touch on one more law and then we'll round up this night next week we'll talk about the natural laws and we'll talk about wealth creation the principle the second law is the law of seed time and harvest the law of increase the law of giving luke 6 38 luke 6 38 everybody read one to read give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that he met withal it shall be measured unto you again this is a spiritual law Genesis 8.22, please. When Noah came out of the ark, the Bible tells us that he took seven unclean animals and two clean animals. Is that true? That, those are the, that's how the animals entered the ark. Seven of the unclean, two of the clean. So when he came out, the Bible says he offered two, two of every animal. That means he offered and finished all the clean animals. How they came back is a technology we must still find out in the Bible while the earth remain verse 21 21 please let's start from 21 and the lord smelled a sweet savour this was noah's sacrifice and the lord said in his heart i will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite anymore every living thing as i have done 22 while the earth that means this is a law that is valid for as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat god joined it with other laws so you can verify if it's still working cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease has cold and heat stop as summer and winter stop as day and night stop then it tells you the law of seed time and harvest is still at work are you getting me the day these three stop that day know the law of seed time and harvest has stopped but from the day they gave birth to you till today the sun still rises sets according to our perspective here there is still cold and there is winter that means the law of seed time and harvest is still at work very very important what is the law of seed time and harvest really what is it simply put the law of giving is a law that this earth please listen very very important this earth functions by giving and receiving that whatever it is that you give there is a technology that is able to multiply whatever you give and return it to you now i'm not talking about money when you give love you are practicing the law of seed time and harvest according to the law of god love will be multiplied and it will come back to you are you getting me when you sow seeds of kindness kindness will be multiplied and it will come to you are you getting what i'm saying that means whatever kind of harvest you want to see in your life you sow the seeds for that harvest oh this is so important this is not seed faith i'm going to teach you on seed faith we'll come to seed faith i'm teaching you the general law of seed time and harvest often called the law of sowing and reaping be not deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap 
if you sow to the flesh you reap to the flesh those who live by the sword they have sown that seed they will die by the sword are you getting what i'm saying this is a very powerful law that means everything that leaves my hand does not leave my destiny everything that leaves my hand goes an, as an investment into my future and the bible says it will find a way of multiplying and coming back to me that means for all the givings you have done truly if you have not received the harvest god cannot lie expect it it is coming are you following me now very very important now there are many kinds of givings and offerings that come under this law let's run number one is offering in the house of god what you call offering the seeds that you sow when you go to the house of god what you call offering that's one way to practice the law of seed time and harvest deuteronomy 16 16 please let's rush so we have to pray our time is gone offerings that you bring to the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose hallelujah it says in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacle and they shall not appear before the lord empty hallelujah there is an admonition in scripture that every time you are coming to appear before the lord in the house of god as much as god has blessed you you should not come to the house of god empty-handed there is a blessing that follows your offerings and your givings in the house of god please never give just because it's offering time and now you don't want to feel bad there are lots of people that come to the body of christ they come to the house of god without a predetermination they just come and they say offering time and i know it's not easy to just plan but you can train yourself hallelujah and part of your preparation for coming to church is that this is an offering that i'm bringing for god so that when it's offering time you're not just looking 100 naira, you return it 50 you return it 20 naira, even the 20 you return the new one and carry one and say oh shall please you just dump the thing there and say lord at least you so no 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 let your heart be in what you are doing when i finish teaching you these principles you will respect any man that is blessed from the kingdom and you will see why god can punish certain people when they open their mouth castigating blessed people in the kingdom are you seeing now you see that it's not child's play there is what you must do it's not cheap it's not free offerings in the house of god number two i call them kingdom investments your givings for the building of the lord's house kingdom investments every other seed and commitment that you make so that there will be a smooth running of the activities that happen around the house of god i call them kingdom investments lay up for yourself treasures in heaven kingdom investments not necessarily that maybe like project ten thousand like this that could be but you can sit on your own and say lord i'm committing myself god is blessing me there is fifty thousand coming in for me maybe five thousand or one thousand I'm going to commit myself that this is for kingdom investments. This is for building of the Lord's house. This is between you and God. You see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, please and please, don't you think this is some spiritual gimmick to bring out money from people? Satan doesn't want the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be blessed. There are natural laws we are going to talk about. But your natural laws have failed already if you don't comply to the spiritual laws. Every unbeliever pastor, they have commitments to various spiritual houses or places of worship. Is that true? Whether they are business people or whatever, 
once there is a project and they hear sometimes even without anybody coming they run because they understand the implication i want you to see how unbelievers play these laws and the way they are building a very great financial future with it commit yourself never be in a place and you don't find something let me tell you see eh? years ago i used to play the keyboard for a ministry a man called reverend emmanuel amechi they were part of the team of people that had the opportunity to preach to Obasanjo and all of that. Now they came and they started a ministry in Joss, Pastor. I used to go and play keyboard for them. Listen, nobody ever gave me one naira. Are you getting me? I would trek from my house. Maybe sometimes after I come back from my local assembly, I will go there and I will play keyboard for them. And I will play with all my heart. I was responsible for my finance and everything. That's the law of seed time and harvest. Are you getting me? Kingdom investment does not just mean money alone. Your participation. Every worker in the house is participating in the building of the kingdom. This is practicing the law of seed time and harvest. It's not just your finance alone. The Bible says you will reap where it, it didn't say you reap where you sow, it said you reap what you sow. So even if you are not here tomorrow, that thing will still bless you. Hallelujah. The only thing I remember getting in that ministry was one bottle of Fanta, I think, and then one cassette during the launching of the man. That was all I ever got. It's my own keyboard, though. Pastor, I will carry it, maybe bike or sometimes from my pocket. And I will go there, but I was doing it joyfully. God is my witness. I never complained once to say this man. It was even my parents that were saying, This 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 boy is a small boy. What is all this one again? But I was doing it joyfully. But God was watching. This is what happened to David. While he was tending his fathership, God was seeing him and saying, I'm seeing the heart of a king in this shepherd. Many of us, when you see certain people, you don't know what stories and experiences made God to vow some vow about their lives. There was something Abraham did that made God to vow that in blessing, I will bless this guy. These are the kinds of people that the Bible says he reproved kings for their sake. Are you listening to me? He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. How much are you committing yourself? How much are you committing your resources? Brothers and sisters, kill greed this night. Kill greed this night. I saw lots of things in my family that I did not want. And I made up my mind that I was going to change a lot of things in my life. I have seen this thing work in my life. I have seen this thing work in my family to the glory of God. And I have seen this thing work by the grace of God in this ministry. As a ministry, let me tell you, we have done some dangerous things. I will not begin to say it here. Maybe as we proceed, we may say a few of them. When you see God blessing us and there is an open heaven, find out, find out, there must be something working. And this is what we are teaching. Hallelujah. Kingdom investments, the building of the Lord's house from today. Make up your mind. Once money comes, don't just start jumping around and say, oh, I'm happy. Time to chop, time to enjoy. Uh -uh. Think kingdom. There is a reason why God has blessed me. I am a steward. Part of this money is for me. Part of it is for the kingdom. I skip one thing. Let me help you become efficient in paying your tithe. Get envelopes. Get envelopes. Get envelopes and just put them close to you. So that when money comes, before any devil will come and confuse you, you have put your tithe quickly. Put it and remove it, seal it, and take it away from your presence. Many of us have had tight of three months piling close to us. One day the thing gets tough, you just open one. You know, many of us do a lot of funny things. And the fact that God kept quiet about it is because he knows we are humans and he's allowing us to grow. A day will come, you will receive the gravity of that disobedience. Don't touch your tight. It's holy unto God. 
this is not to threaten you this is just the truth is how the law of the kingdom works hallelujah two more and then we'll pray first fruits many people have asked me so much question about first fruits i'll just touch it briefly this is one of the ways that we can express our givings now um look up what is first fruit in scripture the concept of first fruit it was ordained by god it was practiced by the jews it was not just part of the jewish law the concept of first fruit listen this is the spirit behind the activity if you don't understand it even those who practice it do it religiously or they do it because some churches have register all the members if you drop your first foot you sign later they call you and say ah, elder what is wrong this is much you have not dropped anything they didn't pay you and it so happens that many churches the employers and the employees are in the same church so and the boss is part of the working committee you can't lie that they didn't pay you you see all those kind of things so let's get it very straight here does first fruit exist yes but listen is first fruit compulsory no the same way saying is bathing compulsory no but not bathing creates consequences correct are you getting me now your first fruit is a symbol is a prophetic way of honoring god and showing him i'm sorry that he's first in your life are you listening to me first in your life that when you take your first fruit and now I'll, I'll explain it in details and give the lord and say lord i'm honoring you maybe the first profit of your business or maybe your first salary as a worker there are different ways that people practice first fruit others maybe january there are churches and people who their salary for january they take it to God and everything and all of that. It's, it's not just about giving God money. It's about telling God that you are first in my life. Are you getting the concept now? So if you just bring money and just throw and you are frowning around and say these people serve very wicked people. I hate January. Every January is the time they eat our money. No. Understand the spirit behind what you are doing. Bless you. If you do not practice first fruit. It doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy the blessings of God. It's just that there are certain dimensions you may not be able to enter. As simple as that. Are you getting me? Your tithing, your giving, your kingdom investments, they all have their inputs to your financial life. It's like saying if you don't do extra moral, will you pass jam? You know, that's the question. It depends on many factors. The kind of school you went to and all kinds of things like that. But it will always be an advantage and it will add to you spiritually. First fruit. Please never allow anybody to put you under force and pressure and try to threaten you with a curse. To say, Sam, I'm waiting for your first fruit. If by next week you don't bring it upon this altar, I will stand on this altar and provoke a curse. Uh, please don't let anybody confuse you. There are many people. There are many men of God that are bullies. They bully members with all kinds of prophetic, prophetic messages. And they get it very serious. They say, I saw a vision. A curse was coming upon the church. And those who did not give first fruit, they were affected. And everybody just runs around and says, carry and give him, please. Just give him less rest. Everything that is not done out of revelation will not profit you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll just leave it there. So first fruit is very important. As you grow in your giving and you see the benefits of giving, you see, that's why our walk in the kingdom is by faith. There are many people, their faith cannot carry them beyond certain things. So don't be angry if both of you are blessed and you see somebody making certain progress. There are certain laws he's practicing. Please, are you getting me? I don't want to go into so much detail. I'm just giving you what we need here. The last one that I'll talk about is the concept of what we know as prophet's offering. People have suffered because of this thing. Let's clarify it once and for all. Is there such a thing as prophet's offering? Are you blessed tonight by what I'm teaching you? Praise the Lord. Two scriptures. 2 Kings 8 from verse 8 and 9. 
What is prophet's offering? Now look up. In ancient times, listen please. In ancient times, prophets or oracles of God as we know, men who communicated the counsel of God, be it from the Levitical priesthood and all of that, because they ministered in the house of God perpetually. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They had no opportunity to participate in agriculture and other things, other secular activities. Things have changed now. But they did not have that opportunity. Are you following me now? And so there were ordinances from God that it was not good and it was not a blessing to go and meet a prophet of God, a true man of God, to go and meet him just empty-handed like that. That it does not command honor. You don't honor God. You don't honor him. Are you getting my point now? And the king said unto Hazael, listen, they wanted to, go, they were looking for, this was, um, this was, um, was it Hezekiah now? I believe. Whoever it was, the king. Praise God. <laughs> Take a present. Are you seeing it now? Take a present in your hand. Where's my present? Take a present in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord of him saying, shall I recover from this disease? The king told the man, don't go and meet a man of God empty handed. He said, take something in your hand as a sign of honor. Are you getting me? When it was time for Jacob to enter his proof, I mean for Isaac to enter, um, Isaac to now bless his sons. Is that true? The Bible says he told his son, go and make me venison. Bring something in your hand so that it will provoke a blessing from me. Are you getting what I'm saying? The king said, take something in your hand. Don't go and meet the man of God empty handed. So we see there that that's the concept of prophet offering. An offering, something that you hold in your hands to honor the grace of the servant of God. First Samuel 9 verse 3 to 13. I'll say it and we'll briefly touch the imbalances there and then we'll wrap up for for today. First Samuel chapter 9 verse 3 to 13. This was the encounter. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So something was lost. They needed a breakthrough in their life. Please listen. I want to teach you a powerful principle. There is still the law of seed faith. We are coming there. But I want to teach you one very powerful principle. And they were lost. So they needed a miracle. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go and look for the asses. Verse 4. And he passed through the Mount Ephraim and passed so on and so forth and all of that. But they did not find it. Verse 5. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return. Let my father leave caring for the asses and begin to take thought of us. Verse 6. Listen. He says, and he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God. Everybody say a man of God. And he is an honorable man. He said, all that he saith cometh to pass. Now, let us go and meet him. So they were confused. They needed breakthrough in their life. Are you getting me now? This was Saul and a servant. And he said, let's go back. Our father will be worried. He said, no. In this city, there is a man of God. There is an honorable man who is able to solve our problem. He said, let's go and meet him. The word of the Lord comes to, to pass in his life. He said, but adventure he can show us our way that we should go verse 7 i want you to know that this was a culture that was practiced among the ancient and that's why a lot of them got lots of blessings then said saul to his servant but behold if we go what shall we bring to the man are you seeing now they knew that it was unlawful to go and meet a man of god just empty-handed to say we have come to meet you and, and all of that. He said, for the bread is spent in our vessel and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? Verse, verse 8 now. And the servant answered Saul again and said, behold, I have here a ha in, at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give the man of God to tell us our way. Are you following me? And so on and so forth and then they met a man and they brought the gift and he told them and he called he was an uh, he 
called Saul an anointed Saul. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the concept of prophet's offering is simply a spiritual way of approaching a man of God with honor. Knowing, listen, knowing that God can use him to bless you and solve your problems. Now today, in our day, is the concept of prophet offering applicable? Absolutely. It is applicable. It's simply the law of honor. Whether you call it prophet offering or whatever, it's simply the law of honor. Let me teach you something, brothers and sisters. It should not deter you that you don't have maybe money to give and you cannot go and meet a man of God. Now, I'm aware that there are lots of men of God. If you come and meet them and you don't have anything, they don't hide it. There is a basket or there is something. Nobody will even tell you as you are entering. Those who are taking you, they'll say, Mr. Man, hold your 30,000. There are even those who have put their bill. They have suffered enough. They said, look, I won't be foolish again. Prophecy, 30,000, this and that and that. And it's working for certain people. They may not be necessarily fake, but I think it's inaccurate. Are you getting my point? Money and anointing does not mix together. People are supposed to do things out of revelation. However, on your own part, I never go and meet a man of God higher than me without. Nobody comes to my house and not get something. There must be something. I must insist that you take something. It's the law of honor. There are some of us who are fond of, you know, and please, I hope you know that I'm not threatening you and say, start packing. God has blessed me. God doesn't owe me anything at all. Are you getting my point now? So don't think it's just some gimmicks to steal out money from people. No, no. My blessing is not tied to you. My blessing is tied to my practicing the kingdom principles. Imagine if God... If I was totally dependent on you for my blessing, I would have died by now. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. But God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? I will never go and meet a man of God higher than me. Even if he's just to greet. Even if he comes into a city. There are men that I hear that just came into Zaria for a program. I'm not even related. I'll package something. Maybe a tie or wine or something. I'll say quickly, take it to that man of God. Just tell them I, went to, I, I want to greet them. Or sometimes I can just put recharge card quickly. One five or something. It's the law of honor. I've taught you this. Commanding results. It's the law of honor. If you've been doing it, stop it. Many of us on your way to go and see a man of God, you branch a, a, a restaurant, Chicken Republic, you blow 5,000 there, you finish eating and you belt, you say, hey, by now, let's just go and see him. And you get up and come. And you even sit down, sir, things are not changing. You say, God will bless us. And, you know, I'm not talking of me. It's, it's very bad. It's dishonoring. Very dishonoring. So while on one side, we don't just teach people that if you don't have a gift, it means the anointing will not flow. He will not bless you. That's erroneous. But let me encourage you. I want to encourage you. Have it as a spiritual culture. Beyond koinonia, you will provoke lots of things. There are places I go to minister and I tell you the way they treat me and the kind of honor they give me. I find out that there are unusual open heavens. Even certain things that I don't want to share, I find myself sharing it. A seed can provoke something in your direction when you honor people. He said, honor your father and your mother. He a law, honor people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Many of you have never blessed a man of God. See, I say this, it's just because I have to teach you. You don't know how difficult it is for me to teach all these kind of things. Many of you have never we are here blessing you day and night. I've said it and said it. Some of you don't even know our birthdays. You don't even know my birthday to say, Kai, this person is doing all of this. Some of you try to call. And I caught the call. And for one hour, you are just talking and rambling and making all kinds of noise. And you are not wondering. You know, this very unemotional attitude. There are many families like that. They gather their whole family. We are coming for deliverance. We are coming for this. And the man just comes, where do I sit down? And they sit down, the wife too sits down. Demons are disturbing us in this house. We had that, uh, is it the, the deliverance ministry or what is it? And you know, they are talking. It's very wrong. Very wrong. No man 
honor the man of God in scripture and did not have anything. You are not buying the miracle, but I'm telling you it's a law that will open you to dangerous dimensions of blessings. When Jacob brought the venison for Isaac, when he took off the venison, it provoked a blessing from within him. Hallelujah. I've shared with you my story on how I packaged a very dangerous seed and I left to Canaan land. Hallelujah. I went to go and honor God's servant here. I didn't get to meet with him, but I still went to practice that law of honor. And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I came out from there, praise God, when I came out from there, I was to enter the car and the Holy Ghost told me, come out. And I came out, he said, kneel down. I laid my hands there. He said, from today, every city you go, the heavens will be open to you. The same way you are seeing it there. So when you see a reproduction of certain things, understand that there are laws that work. There are people who keep criticizing because we are flying our shed. They just look, how are these people doing it? These guys, they must be fetish. That's why you see certain people bring judgment on themselves. You were not there when we were praying the price. But you now see the reward and begin to criticize. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are spiritual laws. There are spiritual laws. One of the reasons why this ministry will never go down is because we sow into your life. There are bosses here. You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, why do you spend so much money on bosses? You don't want to know how much we spend per week just on bosses, chairs outside and the rest. Sometimes I come and I rebuke the protocol people and I tell them, why are there some people standing? Go and get more chairs. Hallelujah. And they order dozens of chairs again and they still need more. I say, still go and get it. It's the law of honor. That I'm a man, I don't know what grace you carry. It's everybody sitting here, you are a bank of grace. It's a privilege that I'm standing here ministering to you. I will be foolish to believe that you don't carry something. Many of you are product of different anointings. Some people have spoken certain blessings into your life. As a ministry, we are humble enough to tap into it. And we tap into it by sowing into your life. Are you listening to me? When we wanted to contact the spirit of excellence as a ministry, we looked at Koza, the Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, and we looked at them and we found out that these guys had a level of excellence we wanted. We carried all the leaders, all the heads of departments, and the ministers and myself. We went to Abuja. Some of you were there. We lodged in a very expensive hotel. It cost us so much, but it was the law of honor. Let me tell you, when we got to Koza there, we went and we humbled ourselves. Our head of department, media, went to meet their head of department and walked there. Our head of protocol went to meet their head of protocol and walked there. Are you getting me? Oh no. And of course, we cannot go empty-handed. We went there. When we finished everything, the pastors came and the senior pastor came. They just humbled themselves. I can brag and say, look, I'm a man of God. I'm, I, I'm seen on common demonstrations of the spirit. There is always something you do not have. You must learn how to receive it. And we went and we humbled ourselves there and they spoke to us. We have seen certain levels of excellence, but when we came back, we came with a spirit and an anointing. Many of you have missed out on many anointings because you dishonor men of God. You are not... See, the way many pastors suffer in many ministries. God blesses you. Ministers are here suffering, speaking over your life. Let me tell you, if you know how much research and the things we do to bring these materials, while you are sleeping, we are awake. The Bible says, he that ministers to you in spiritual things. You should minister to the person in carnal things. The carnal there doesn't mean fleshly. Make it a, a point, a duty in your life. That everywhere you find yourself and there is a man of God there. Practice the law of honor. As much as possible. Please don't feel bad from today to say, okay, you are coming to greet me. I don't have anything. Don't feel guilty at all. Are you getting me? But I'm teaching you. There are many people who don't have the means sincerely, but I'm teaching you is a law. Begin to practice it. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one time I went for a ministration in, in a particular city. I won't call it because there are so many people downloading the teachings. And I was so humiliated. 
pastor i felt so bad i said lord this is not fair when i went to that city where they kept me i was going to ask the people and say please where is a very good hotel here let me relocate and book for myself and stay i didn't come for slavery here to come and stay here for god's sake it was a horrible place when it was night one sister just entered quickly as if i'm going to sleep with her bam 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 she just pushed the drawer drop everything and ran away i said what is all this when she brought listen i'm trying to communicate a point she brought this whole thing and i just sat down i greeted her she didn't even answer dropped everything and then she sped out i opened it they made indomie and one egg with la casera i had spent that day it was a very far city i said lord is it that i could not take care of myself you have been faithful to me what is all of this i don't take indomie i don't take la casera listen i need to say this if this is all i say we'll, we'll round up now and pray there are many of you who want to invite a man of god don't bring a man that your your financial if you cannot honor his grace be patient there are so many people that want to bring men of god i want to bring this we must bring this person you are not ready to cater and take you bring any man and humiliate him you will bring war on yourself i'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle i had to go and buy malt that night I just bought malt i took it i gave thanks and honestly i was not offended praise god the next day nothing there was no breakfast they didn't ask whether i'm fasting or i want to eat later they just came they say we have come the car they carried me they chartered one car at least do something presentable are you getting my point it was hot it was horrible i was humiliated i said goodness what is this oh god i said well lord i'm, I'm, I'm i went and it was a great meeting god blessed all the people i paid my flight ticket from here to the place and i did everything when i finished by afternoon they brought all cross soup for me and something you know they just came and dropped it you know this this um this cooler this one that this small one that's what they just came and dropped and we have three or four pure water or something i said what is this i'm not exaggerating it was a humiliating experience and i spent three days there on the third day when i was done i was happy i laughed do you know what happened I, I want to tell you the pain of many ministers and what has made some people to do certain things don't just sit down and criticize and say they are materialistic praise the lord after this we'll rise up and pray this is what happened and when i got when I finished everything, the people came, they were all pinching themselves. I told them, please, I need to catch my flight. I, I had misery. I wanted to come back fast. Hallelujah. And then when it was time, the president just came. The envelope that they put the honorarium, you will know that it was not organized. One, you know envelope that they've written something, then you just strike it. I'm serious. And he carried it and packaged. It was not up to even half of my flight ticket. He just brought it and said, sorry, you know that we are, we are starting, we are managing and all of that. And I just blessed him, blessed everything and sold it back into them. Not because I was angry. Imagine if I had left everything and I came by faith. Are you getting me now? That I came by faith and said, I'm going to bless these people. Some of you do not know the pain. There are many men of God that are bleeding. There are many people that are punishing themselves, investing in the house of God. You forget that these people have lives. Are you getting my point now? While you are sleeping, they are praying for. It's a different thing if they are not serious. But where you see a man that is committed to your spiritual development, let me tell you, you rob yourself of certain dimensions if you do not bless them. Again, if you don't believe this, there is no problem. But I'm teaching you a very powerful principle. I always seek to give and not to take. This is why you see certain people entering some strange order of blessings. It works. Never invite a man of God you are not ready to honor his grace. If you don't have the means, be patient. Don't come and humiliate a man. A man has a wife. He has children. He must pay the school fees of those people. He's commit. This is why a lot of men of God get into all kinds of manipulation because of the pain they are going through. The, he now comes back home and the wife is saying, honey, well done. Oh, three days, I missed you. 
alpha no nothing for the super and the man says man god was glorified the wife said okay so when will we be glorified now we have glorified god hallelujah prophet's offering is real it exists next week we'll take it up from there rise up on your feet begin to pray and say lord thank you for your word our time is fast spent just bless the lord tell him lord we bless you lord we bless you lift your hands and give him praise thank you for your word the law of tithing your giving your offerings your kingdom investments the honor that you bring to the vessels that god blesses you pray and say lord the giving grace lift your voice and pray the giving grace let it man to me right now the giving grace that grace to give that grace to give the grace to tithe the grace to sow the grace to commit myself in your house go ahead and pray when you pray that prayer no power in existence will stop you i'm telling you you're on your way to financial dominion pray yes lord thank you many of you is a mind shift that has happened to you tonight i know our time is far spent but it's worth it because what you have received now no man can take away from you hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly if you are here and you've not given your heart to the lord we've spoken about the law of honor the greatest honor you can give god is to give him back the life that he gave you there are many of us that are here we are living our lives by ourselves and for ourselves the bible says if your hope is just in this earth alone you are of all men most miserable there are people who have never made a decision for jesus christ inside and outside there are others who have made a decision but honestly you found yourself derailing the teaching on dominion financial dominion will only profit you if you are connected to jesus christ so right now i'm going to give you an opportunity you've never given your heart to the lord or you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing i don't care whether you're a christian or you're a pastor you are saying lord tonight i want to make it right with you please leave your seat and come here right now god bless you god bless you god bless you leave your seat and come leave your seat and come leave your seat and come don't wait for anybody i believe that there are people the holy ghost is talking to please we're out of time keep coming inside and outside don't be afraid if the holy ghost convicts you please come very quickly very quickly if there are people that the lord is speaking to you've never given your heart to the lord or you found yourself derailing there is nothing to be ashamed of god bless you god bless you god bless you celebrate them they are coming i believe there are still a few people outside don't be afraid don't be afraid god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming hallelujah keep coming as many as are coming just let them come please pray with me very quickly say lord jesus i love you from the depths of my heart today i make jesus lord of my life i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive cleansing and remission of my sins holy spirit come and live in me in the name of jesus christ i declare that i'm saved in jesus name father preserve these ones preserve them and make them mighty men in the name of the lord jesus please quickly just follow the ushers they'll have your details and they'll meet with you tomorrow Hallelujah. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.